2023 so far has all been about one word and we all know what it is. It's AI. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Daily Show where we talk about stocks, commodities, and cryptos. Today, we talk about whether we're about to see a change. It's been a rough couple of months for the S&P 500 equal weight, but that is hitting incredibly low lows. When we see turns like this, what happens next? And what does it mean for day traders, swing traders, and of course, investors? Today, we look at all the perspectives of the market, along with this short squeeze that continues on anything to do with AI. Is there still a diamond in the rough? We'll take a look at it and see if we can spot some options that are starting to appear. Well, welcome back, everybody, to The Daily Show, where we talk about markets around the world. Today, we discuss some big key indicators, but as usual, we'll go through the macro, the news, and, of course, the hottest charts and the key levels that you need to be watching. If it's your first time here, welcome to the community. Subscribe, smash that like button if you find value in today's video. I'm sure you will. There's a lot to cover. So let's talk about equal weight index. It's not doing well. In fact, on the year, it's basically down. So it's a big difference from what we're seeing across the board of technology stocks one to rule them all yeah <laughs> and that's the one that's going right now so as we said here at the start it's been a rough couple of months for this average and when we get reads like this what tends to happen well it's pretty simple we usually see a switch in fact the s p 500 equal weight after we get these types of readings tends to do a lot better over the next subsequent weeks. This is something that bulls will be looking for in the market. And it goes back to, if you miss the first run, I wouldn't really worry. There's always another rotation in the markets. Here are some of the stats that we get in terms of reads. You can see the two week stat, the one month stat, and of course, six months and 12 months later, the 12 month one is uh, incredibly good. I wonder if that can happen. <laughs> but anyway, equal weight does tend to do a little bit better after this period. You can see the 2008 lows. You can also see the 2020 lows and then everything else. So is this market about to turn? Well, this is something that, of course, everybody is asking and scratching their heads on. Some things show you that it may be possible. Of course, forward PE ratios, which is something that we're talking about a lot on this channel, uh, yeah, the S&P mid caps are a lot cheaper. So are the small caps, even compared to relative history. Now, if we go to the large caps, big tech stocks, anything to do with AI, yeah, they're not really that cheap by historical values. In fact, they're above their 16.8 year average. And as you would know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, Ford PE is a pretty important point. We're also entering what we usually class as one of the weaker periods of the year. So if you're going with pre-election years in general, Often technology can run a little bit longer. June into July can be okay. And then we go into a very messy period. Q3 in particular can be very nasty during these years of pre-election. And it's the one that's most likely going to be the sell-off event if we do end up seeing one because, of course, well, we know what happens in Q3. Earnings again and we tend to see a little bit of underperformance. Now, a lot of people are talking about the debt limit. What's going on with the debt limit? Well, here's a great chart that shows you the debt limit when they actually make the change and what happens with the markets. You'll see since 1990, actually markets have trended a little lower first before going up. So the debt limit can be the kind of catalyst for actually a bit of a sell-off. Now, on this chart, it's only 1%, but of course, it was exacerbated in 2011 and other periods of time, it's fallen more and it's fallen less in others. So not, since 1990, generally when the debt limit is done, it can be kind of like that buy the rumor, sell the event style concept. How will we know that though? Well, let's look at both the bull and the bear case scenarios. So the first up, we'll go through some why the bulls feel pretty good right now. One of them's got to be the skew. The skew is still continuing on its upward rise. Now, this is often seen as the black swan indicator. And we've talked a little bit about how when the skew hits a 150 level, which it's basically about 146 right now, we tend to see kind of like peak fear in the markets. Everyone's hedging, hedging costs are going up. And that's because on the 16th or this month, we're about to see most likely another 25 basis point hike from the Fed. At least that's what economists now believe. Only a week ago, 10% only believe that that's happening. And that feeds into what we've been discussing here for a while, which is higher interest rates for longer. And we still believe that the Fed should not really be cutting in 2023. Once we get the new dot plot, we'll see what they have to say. The market could also see that as a catalyst after the event. Anyway, SKUs going up. What do we need to see? Why do you need compression? In other sell-off events over the last couple of years, we've generally got a SKU compression. Then we've seen 
the sell-off come afterwards. That hasn't happened during this run yet. We will be watching it. Here's another sign that things are starting to heat up. Look at the v VXN, which is basically the VIX of the NASDAQ. It's actually blowing out here as the NASDAQ goes up. Now, yes, okay, the VIX is usually considered the fear index, but really it can go up, of course, based on volatility. So we're seeing mega squeezes across the board and options. Take a look at that VXN. It's flying and it's a cause for concern, not necessarily a full switch yet. So we're looking at that equal weight. We're looking at the idea that the S&P 500 RSP is underperforming. Well, what's overperforming? It's the NASDAQ. Look here, NASDAQ versus Russell 2000. Really big kind of outperformance. Often after that outperformance, we go into a holding pattern and actually other markets start to do better. Now, we know that the Russell's been a tale of two markets. If you've shorted the Russell this year, you've done okay. If you shorted the metal stocks, you've done well. If you've shorted tech, it's been horrible. So that's why you've got to really pick your weakness. And coming forward soon, it could be that tech starts to weaken or at least consolidates while we get outperformance of new sector rotations. And that's where I think a lot of people need to be looking. Look over here to the PCC, put call ratios, still going down. Overall, this is what you want to see. If you are a bear, you want put call ratios in the dirt, which means everybody's buying calls. We'll look at an updated amount of how many people are buying calls very, very soon. Quite a few people are asking about treasuries. This is, of course, a big discussion topic with the debt ceiling. What happens after these treasuries go through? We will do a special on it later on this week. It did hit into our 100 barrier, which obviously we do believe buyers are at for treasuries. And they present a pretty interesting storyline. You know, treasuries could easily go back up to this 118. Obviously, there's some turbulent times for them, but we'll talk about that later on in the channel. Obviously, at this stage, it's still around that demand level. Copper fell down after hitting the supply. We know that copper is showing us demand destruction. Dr. Copper often shows us weakness in the economy before it's occurring in the markets. And that's partially why you're seeing metals and energy falling off. Dr. Copper still weak, still at supply, looking pretty bad. What about central bankers? Well, the Fed continues to actually pump back in through the markets. Uh, the central banks around the world as an aggregate are continuing to drop or taper. So that's a little bit annoying. We know that if you're a bear, you really need that green line down as well. I think it's a big reason why the markets are being able to hold these zones. Compared to the queues, it looks a little bit different. The queues are certainly very extra, like they're too high in comparison to where we have the liquidity. But this is what happens when you get into a craze. And of course, we're in the craze of AI right now. And we've talked about other opportunities. Some came through over the last 24 hours. Um, if you're watching the live stream, we were talking about cybersecurity and obviously another stock, which we'll cover later. And both of those had pretty good sessions. Let's move over here to the move index. This is the bond VIX. The bond VIX continues to trade at the 94th percentile in terms of what bonds expect compared to what the VIX expects in volatility moving forward. I'm usually a little bit scared of bonds traders. They tend to know something. However, at the moment, obviously, they've been subdued. What about the SPY versus the dollar? Well, the dollar's been rising. The S&P 500's been melting up very slowly or dulling very slowly up with a series of higher peaks and higher troughs. Again, it's a warning sign that we use. And certainly, whenever we've had these strong dollar moves in the past, they've tended to coincide with weakness in the S&P. And I think that's important that we note that along with our other things. Have we seen a move to defensives? Is this the final step for somebody to actually see a rotation out? I'm starting to think it is. And this is, of course, the staples versus the S&P. We've been looking at this now for around three days and we haven't seen a turn. So we need to see that staples and utilities actually find buyers. They haven't at this stage. There's no new news and they're getting absolutely destroyed. That's fine as long as we keep watching them and we look for the crosses to the upside. Look at this horrible, horrible sell-off here in utilities. So we're waiting for these things to actually show us turns and they haven't just yet, but it's obviously there. Now, why could we be doing that? Well, because basically utility stocks and staples are starting to get oversold. Only 4% of the time do they hit these levels. And while we're not predicting the turn just yet, we're waiting and seeing. And of course, you can see some of the good stats that come off it. How could we make sense of that using something like options? Well, let's take a look at the option spreads because the gambling circus was in town and boy, oh boy, were there people trading some big amounts. Let's have a look here. NVIDIA continues to get a lot of hype on it. You can see that the outweighing of calls is still very massive compared to puts. They're short dated. 
Tesla in particular getting tons of short dated calls on it. We'll look at those very, very soon in more detail. But as we scroll through the list here, you'll notice that's all of these normal ones. The thing I think that was really wild was Broadcom. That stock went and hit 920 during our live stream. It had a monster move. Someone got massively leveraged and squeezed yesterday. I would say that they were forced to buy back into the market. And what we're seeing is a repeat here of 2021, except on a $100 billion move scale. I mean, it, that is probably the more unbelievable component. How much are these moving? Another stock that we talked about last week, which was, of course, a cybersecurity is now starting to come in here, which is CrowdStrike. You can see that was getting some call action on it, two times the 90-day average. Pretty exceptional, 2.9% move. There were some opportunities in certain markets. 58% now calls to 42% puts. Do you smell it? That's right. It's greed, guys. Look at those greed lemmas coming through. First time in a while we've seen such strong call action and it's consistent now for many, many days. So it's time to buckle up and, of course, put on your uh, best risk management shoes because, of course, at this stage you will need to be very protected whenever you're positioning because this is getting a little bit FOMO here. 40 million normal, it was pretty much smack bang on the average, but 58% calls. Let's have a look through the queues and some of the markets, notably gold here, getting a lot of transactions on it, GLD. We'll look at that in a second. Obviously, SPY getting huge amounts of transactions, lots of puts still. Hard for the market to go down with that many puts in it, with the calls. Yeah, well, we all know that story before. Let's have a look at the call strikes and the put strikes. Biggest levels here across the board, coming in from the SPY, all these zero DTE option expirations, 31st and 30th. And you'll notice there a lot to the call side and put side around 420, kind of putting a ceiling on the SPY this week at the 420 so far. Tesla, totally different though. Tesla is trading like, you know, mad people are really loving this stock. And it is uh, big volumes, not as big as we've seen last week, but obviously 200s, 210s, 205s. Look at all the calls. It's all calls in the first bit. And they're pushing that 220 number. We talked about it. It's probably detached a little bit from technicals right now. And it is trading on purely these option squeezes. I'd be careful unless you know or you have these kind of you know floats coming through constantly on your charts. You can just see here all the calls coming through. 220 would be a strike that I, of course, would be looking at. And 215, if they start to get really big, then we know that uh, usually they'll be covering and it will have to go up into that stock. Now, what else is interesting about this? Well, as we scroll down through these individual stocks, you might notice there's a little sneaky Intel starting to appear. Now, Intel's been hated for a very long time, and uh, now it's getting some interesting strikes on it. So we're starting to see you know, the price of Intel pushing forward with options. People got onto that in the last 24 hours. It was one of the best performing stocks of the sectors. So yeah, we spoke about it. We'll look at it later, but Intel started to appear Obviously, gold also starting to appear there. We'll just jump back over to this chart. I think there's a gold strike. This is indices. Yeah, there's the gold strikes. Look at these gold strikes. They're coming through. Look at the dates on them, though. Different dates. 18, uh, this is 18th of the 8th. So basically, we're getting 215, 195s. We'll take a look at gold a little later on the video. Let's move over to the now expected moves from The Economist. 66% now believing that we will get a 25 basis point hike. What a change they put through on the charts. Yeah, well, it just shows you, doesn't it, what happens here in these markets. And people, you never can expect exactly what's happening. I still go with higher for longer. The Federal Reserve will stick to the rates. We'll find out whether they tell the truth. What do you think at the comments down below, though? Will we get a 25 basis point hike in June? Are you an economist? Let's find out in the, in the comments down below. Over the last five days, it's been the tale of multiple markets again. Semi is doing well, thanks to NVIDIA and all of the semiconductors. Then we've got technology, consumer discretionary, thanks to Amazon. And old metals, not doing so well. Dr. Copper striking hard there. And also, we had energy falling off. Notably, no defensive sectors doing well, getting crushed in this rotation. And I think they're going to get oversold. Let's move over here to what's going on over the last 24 hours. Again, metals still bad. And of course, we've also got defensives still bad. No changes there. Very difficult to see rotation in this market at this stage. 
If you are interested in rotation, you're interested in finding out more about what we do, you can jump on over to our Twitter and of course, follow at FX Evolution. Links in the description down below. Also follow us on the other socials. We're always sharing this stuff. So remember, if you're interested so far, you're probably going to like what you see in the others. So check them out. Let's continue to go into some of the other charts. First up, we've got dollar. Now, US dollar has hit a key resistance. We've been angling for this for a few weeks now after we saw that massive breakout that happened down here. We had to switch bullish. It's been an incredible bullish run. We've jumped into supply. We've jumped into Fibonacci's and all sorts of levels in here, a lot of confluence, and we're waiting for turns that could potentially happen. Have we seen it yet? 15-minute chart, no new low. We need to see it probably under more likely this level, but anywhere between 103.72 and 103.65 could be a turn point. Dollar is very strong. And that's just showing you that, you know, what contrary to popular belief, that's that's really been the squeeze the last couple of weeks. But if dollar does fail underneath this level, I'd like it then to come back to where it is right now. And we'll talk about that in the next video. But yes, dollar could be turning. We've got higher highs. We've got a little bit of dulling of this trend. We're looking for a new low to be formed. Let's move over to gold. It hit our trend line here that we had in the live stream. Now, has gold hit the bottom for now? I've obviously been incredibly negative on gold. And yeah, I think rightfully so. It's fallen off quite substantially since we turned negative on it. And I still think it's going to have a hard couple of months. But did you see the options? They're starting to appear again on this market. They're starting to sniff out potentially some opportunity. At this point, we're still on the trend line. We could move down to 1918. I like this little area in here for gold to maybe find some buyers. So we'll be watching this one very closely. But if you're on the small time frames, it did make a higher peak. You're needing it to go above this 1965 to probably solidify a 15 minute, one hour significant change of trend. That would push in the significant change and then pullback should be met by bull demand, 1980, 1976 being the next hurdle to overcome. But right on that kind of sell resistance at this stage. GLD getting a little bit of love here in terms of options. You can see that it's on the trend line as well. So, you know, an important point. And if you actually zoom in here, it ended up getting a small island reversal. Gap down, gap up, bullish. Hmm, is that showing us a sign that maybe gold is uh, finding some lows in here. The V has started. Is that the low, you know, for stop losses? Is it worth it? Well, you know, just a technical, but I'm looking at it on the charts at this stage. And we have seen an island reversal in GLD on the markets. The VVIX is showing us a pretty big TD13 that often shows us that we're about to see and experience high volatility events. And if we move over to the US oil, um, you can see that it did not like the last 24 hours. A big sell-off in US oil, selling all the way back down and probably now moving its way back to 66, which has been a mega demand for it. We've been hating on oil for a while. I've been wondering about this level. I'm not going to say I've got reshorts in here very much. But uh, yeah, if you're looking at it, you know, I think the next target could be 66 now that we've put in a pretty significant daily close below the last points. There could be more to come on the energy sector. What about Tesla? Oh, I still, yeah, it's probably detached from technical reality at the moment, thanks to all the calls coming in on it. Uh, this was a heavily traded zone. If you'd taken it with options short, I wouldn't have blamed you. Obviously, we are seeing incredible uh, options support for this particular stock. I'd let that die down, wait for some puts to come through. I don't change much. I still think 145 is on the cards for Tesla in the future, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see it there over this year. However, at this stage, with the price where it's at, I think it's all options, guys, and I don't even know if the technicals are worth viewing after it, it blew through that zone. Uh, what levels I have set is 178 for a turn, and at this stage, because, of course, it got the gap up, if you are a shorter, you're looking for a gap down on Tesla, that to show you potentially an island reversal, and then, you know, hopefully to see a bunch of puts coming in on the zero DTEs. Let's move over to AVGO. This stock was uh, wild. You know, it's not just small. It was it's $300 billion. And you can see during the live stream, we got up to 920. Then we kind of thought it could be peaking because it just exploded. Someone lost all their money. And I would say it was a big player. They got absolutely squeezed. They're probably hiding at the moment because they're very sad with their creditors coming at them. AVGO, oof. Uh, yeah, that was that's pretty wild. So with a move that big, has that begun the sell-off of these stocks? Well, let's do a percentage here. 
This is certainly in the vicinity of what I expect to be a topping of that particular stock. 13% down. Do I think there'll be people that are like, I need to BTFD, guys, BTFD? Yeah, I think there will be. Could drop more before it does that. Uh, but this could be the high here for AVGO, and it could mark bad things for NVIDIA as well. That's a that's a big sell-off. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. Obviously, a bit of a drop. Percentage-wise, nothing compared to it. Uh, you need to see more percentage drop-off from NVIDIA. I want to see 10 to 15% over two to three days. Let's see if that happens. If it does, then I still think people will be like, yeah, that's a great bargain. Is it a great bargain? I, I'm not so sure about that. But yes, certainly the stock put in the first signs of some weakness. We've been cautioning against this. I don't want to sell it yet. I'm a bit scared. Why? Because this is the type of thing that happens in markets. They push every single boundary. They squeeze everybody. And it's only when everyone's in despair on it or everybody's feeling the FOMO and calling NVIDIA to $1,000 and stuff, that's usually a good sign. So at the moment, AVGO certainly does seem like it put it in. Now, let's have a look at the Intel. So Intel getting a little bit of options love, uh, certainly an island reversal. We spoke about it over on the live stream for the Mon or for the Tuesday open this week. Usually we do Monday open, so make sure to subscribe if you enjoy that type of content. And we like the base. Now, does that mean I like Intel for an investment? Not really. I think this stock is underperformed and it's, it's terrible generally. But it does have many of the signs of stop loss steals. It has many of the signs of a nice pullback. And uh, yeah, it was certainly one that we were looking at in the private community and of course the public community as of the previous session. XLP, nothing here yet, no turn, certainly in the interesting zone, but it really shows you, look how much sell-off there's been in the defensives. People hating the defensives right now. Will it switch? That could be a sign. Apple, the canary, it broke through, it rejected, almost finished where it opened. Yeah, could be the high. I don't know. With Apple, we keep watching it on that one. DAX looking horrible. This is, of course, a totally different market to America. And we haven't got a new low yet. But if we do, is that the sign of the DAX actually distributing out? Remember, it hit a all-time high only a few days ago. And then it sold off aggressively. Similar to the XJO, ASX 200. I've warned everyone against this thing. It is new lows. Look at that. Bang. That is demand destruction, guys. It's coming through in energy. It's coming through in metals. It is coming through on even the finances. And that hurts the FTSE. It hurts the XJO. Different markets, different types of sectors. We're hitting now into this trend line. If we breach that, well, the next stop could be 69, 57, 000 for it. And certainly it's not looking as healthy as the rest of the markets. What about the NASDAQ? Well, it hit into a critical resistance. Certainly finding a, kind of like a peaking zone, potentially a rejection. Would I short it? Well, probably not. I don't like to short the strength. So it's a very, very tough market to go through. I'm sure a lot of you are screaming at the screen saying, I'm going to short it, man. All right, good luck. Um, you know, here is the build. Here is obviously the higher high. It did make a lower low on the session. I guess if it gaps out and gaps down, it could be okay. Let's have a look at the cues just to see what it look, does or looks like here. So if we get a nice gap underneath, you could claim that it's an island reversal at the highs and then get a little excited. Oh, it's going to be marginal, I think. S&P 500, a little bit different. Actually, gaps filled. Look at this. Bang. That's one of our gaps filled. Fantastic. And then we also have this one filled. So we've managed to sell back into it. Still a dull market, still barely making new highs and certainly finding the sell on the previous session. US 500 futures did see a little breach high and then sell off. It's a little turn. There's a lot of inefficiencies in here. So I could easily see it going back to 4150, 4160-ish, and then maybe finding some buyers. Still too early to call swing on it. There's just no chance that we've got swing just yet. ES futures, uh, you can see here the Bollinger, it's outside of those, maybe back to the 415060. That's the 20 moving average. But again, it's outside, it's sold off. The VIX or the VVIX is certainly starting to show us that volatility should be coming back into the market. If it does, then these will continue to sell. But for swing traders, you know, you need to get under 4,100 or 4,050 really to show a solidified change of trend. It just hasn't happened yet. Let's move over to the Bitcoins. Bitcoin is on a sell at 28,000. Is it a strong level? We haven't seen what I would like to see as a setup. I usually have patience and I react to setups. I don't have a sell setup here, but I do know it's a heavily traded zone. And that, if it bears, are going to come back into Bitcoin would generally be the level. 
Otherwise, they're going to go for 29 and a half. So if we get a new breakout close above here high on the daily, you're probably going to 29 and a half. If you are waiting for news this week, there's a little bit coming your way. So let's have a quick look here. We've got on the Wednesday, we have Jolt's job openings. And then it's really about jobs numbers, ADP non-farm employment change, ISM manufacturing PMI, that'll be a good one, 10 a.m. New York. And then we get the big kahuna number, the jobs numbers that always are revised. Will we finally see an actual unemployment spike hit? Will the markets show us that we are potentially six months away from the recession being called? That's usually the stat, remember. If we see unemployment start to rise, it usually means six months from the recession being called. Uh, yep, at this stage, it's been a very hot economy. So will it continue to be hot? Maybe put your predictions, comments down below. We'll find out if anybody's correct. If you are, I'll post you in the next video. Let's move over to some other stuff. If you've enjoyed today's video, remember to follow us on the socials, get some free trading cheat sheets. Why not? Got nothing to lose. And of course, follow us everywhere on the Linktree stuff. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.